was a hot deal that went up in flames. The car burned up, dear. On the next Judge Hatchet, today at 4 on Fox 2. Isabella is getting the whole world to stand up and take notice. You're going to change my life. Don't miss the sexy comedy. Critics are calling one of the most delightful films of the year. You'll want to take someone you love. You look beautiful. Penelope Cruz. Too so hot for you? Woman on top. I wouldn't want you any other way. Rated R. Starts Friday only in theaters. Welcome back to Mornings on 2. The time now is 8.38. Glassware that was once inexpensive and commonplace dinnerware has now become a treasure that may be hiding out in a cabinet or an attic or the basement. In today's What's It Worth segment, consumer editor Tom Bakar explores the amazing world of consolidated and phoenix glass. Just as the legendary bird arose from its ashes, Phoenix Glass has arisen to become one of the favorite collectibles among many people who collect antique glass. Phoenix and a related company called Consolidated began producing art glass in the late 1890s. In the mid-1920s, so-called art deco glass, hand rot glass, came into vogue worldwide, with Consolidated and Phoenix leading the American effort. But just five years ago, legal secretary and opera singer Dan Stanley began collecting it and now has almost 200 pieces. Well, five years ago, I could, I could find an awful lot of it at antique shows and things like that. And uh, these days, it's, I guess because of the book that came out, it's kind of drying up now. It's getting more and more difficult to find. That difficulty in finding it has made the glass increasingly valuable. You know, a lot of my glasses appreciated two or three hundred percent over the past few years. Both Consolidated and Phoenix have identifying paper labels, but often those labels have worn off. Because it's always good to have the label on the bottom. Uh, people prefer to see it that way they know it's the real thing. One of the rarest Phoenix pieces is a pine cone vase. I don't know why it's so valuable. I don't particularly like it, but I have it because it's the rarest. Stanley paid $120 for a piece that now sells for $500. He paid $45 for his first piece, the Diving Girl Bowl, a piece that now sells for $500. Stanley paid $900 for this rare and intricate lovebird vase, which would now bring as much as $1,500. This Phoenix Zodiac vase, purchased three years ago, now has doubled in value to $1,250. This piece, Dancing Nymphs, has doubled in value to $1,500. But it's the black pieces that are the rarest of the rare. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bought a, uh, a little black vase, I think three years ago, and I paid $225 for it, and it's worth $1,250 now. That's a nice return on your investment, huh? Yeah, and it, it proves one thing that's really important. It is never too late to begin collecting things, because a lot of things don't have the thing that really makes them rise in value. A lot of things do, but whenever a book comes out, as this did a few years ago, then things start taking off. So if you're looking at stuff, if it doesn't have a book, it's worth collecting because if it do ever does get a book, uh, the things will really pop in value. Now, this particular glass here looks very much like the, the pine cone glass you, sh you showed mm -hmm. there uh, on the video. So this is a piece called Wild Geese. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, kind of an unusual because it has a blue frost on it, and uh, this thing, which probably sold for a few bucks, uh, now is worth about um, 300 $300? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that one. And this here? This is a, a beautiful piece. It's called uh, Primrose. It's a coral wash piece, and uh, that uh, is $500. And then down here in front, a little vase. This little cute thing is called the Hummingbird. Uh, small as it was, and probably one of the less expensive pieces when it was new, is $125 now, so this is really worth paying attention if you have this stuff. And this is the one that uh, Frank... Uh, really like, so it's lost value immediately. Yeah. No, actually, <laughs> actually it hasn't. That's just a simple plate called Five Fruits, but it's a beautiful crystal plate, and that little plate's worth $200 easily. It's kind of, uh, do you want to own glass like this when you live in earthquake country? Well, that was a good question. We asked Dan about that. We said, Dan, what do you do about this? You know, if you have an earthquake, this could all come down. He actually has a attaching device for all of his pieces. So if you are a glassware collector, a very important point, get the attaching devices. There are many stores have this that are either Velcro or some sort of a, uh, a um, you know, some sort of an adhesive that keeps them down, and you won't have yeah, a problem. Yeah, it does make a lot of sense. Thank you, Tom. Time now is 843. Uh, back to Berkeley High School and Mark Bitta. Good morning, Mark. More, more glass. <laughs> I wanted to learn more. No. I had to teach you again, Ross. Come on. Yeah, but back to...